All right, we got the seats out. And you know what? A lot of times you find some funny things in these cars. This one, not so much. You got a, uh, ooh, I can get a, a subscription to Muscle Machines. That's exciting. There's a T-top, this is for the T-top shim. We have a blank piece of paper. Reynolds Warp Fiber, whatever that means. Yep, that's from the seat belt. Sometimes you find some really interesting stuff. This one looks like it's just boring old carpet and two quarters. I always am excited for, oh, there's an eight millimeter wrench. That's not mine, so that's now mine. I'm always excited to pull carpet out of these old cars because you just never know what you're gonna find. But let's, this one doesn't look like we're gonna find that much. So to get this carpet out, it's pretty easy. First, I like to take the center panel pieces out and hopefully we can reuse those. They do look like they're in fairly decent shape. Um, then you have to unhook the seat belts or if you want you can just cut the carpet down in the back to pull that out um, and then undo this strip right here and then the kick panels and the front pieces come out and then from there the back is one huge big piece um, but I'm going to take this all this center part out as well and get that all ready for new carpet that's the plan and fingers crossed there won't be any rust in the floors which I'm about 99% sure they're not, so we're good. We should be good. You guys want to see something that I've never seen? Look at this. This is a like a a deadener panel that goes right in front of this body mount right here, and they're they they exist on both sides. That one's kind of meh, but I've never ever out of all the cars I've ever done interiors, and I've never actually seen one survive. So this carpet has never been out or touched. Of course, you can tell that by how nasty it is, but. Uh, so far, the uh, floor is looking good. You can see the original color of the car was a lighter silver uh, than the darker gray that it is. But that's awesome because that's a good color. Um, I'm looking at all this wiring under here, and other than you know some of the radio stuff, a lot of it looks really good. So I'm hoping a radio install will be pretty easy. Well, that's all the carpet out, and you guys are gonna think I'm weird, but I'm amazed. Look at all this factory sound deadener and stuff. I mean, it's never been touched. The only time I think it has is when the dummies put these speakers in the back. These ones right here. And they didn't even hook them up. I mean, they weren't even wired. They kind of just fell out. Uh, whenever I, I touched them, they fell out and they're gone. So I'll probably put the stock speakers back in. I'm not sure. I haven't gotten that far yet. I know I need to do something about the radio. But, I mean, I've usually this... This uh, sound deadener stuff is just gone. I mean, just worn away by water or use or something. And I've never seen it like this. This car is such a great car. So, I gotta pull these rear panels out, the very, very back ones. And the cargo shade is perfect. I mean, just all kinds of awesome in this car. So, and at this point, I'm pretty much ready to put in the new carpet which I don't have yet, so I might spend it, you know, cleaning up the door panels, all that kind of stuff, uh, getting everything ready to go, vacuum it out. All right, the interior work is coming along well. We have the back carpet installed. We have some side carpet installed. Well, it's almost installed, mostly installed. But uh, I got in the mail today some interior dye. Uh, Poyos, you're not allowed inside. Thank you for coming. No Poyos allowed. All right, so we have this oyster aerosol dye, which is great stuff. I've used this dye many times. And there's a couple things we need to dye. One is gonna be the steering column, which is ready to go. Two is gonna be these rear compartment frames. And then I have a main compartment frame right there that I still need to clean up and dye. If I have any extra dye left, I might do you know some of the seat backs, stuff like that. But other than that, we're pretty much you know good to go when it comes to stuff being dyed. The dash is still in good shape. Everything else will clean up really, really well. So, as long as Chopstick doesn't get inside the car and make it all dirty, then we should be good. The 79 project is coming along. It's been a couple of weeks. I got the carpet laid in. The steering column's all painted up, ready to go, and we're gonna put that together today, just so that can be done. I do have this nifty 
faux wood steering wheel that will go in and we'll place the old one which is good. We're also starting to work on the rear compartment. There's some steering column pieces and a radio. Something funny that I found in this column is this. So this is basically um, what runs your horn. So let me show you the good one. So the way this works is there's a piece of fiber or cardboard insulator in between this metal piece and this metal piece. When you push down on the horn button, this will touch, make contact, complete the circuit, and then your horn will work. As you see, someone in their genius decided that screws were better, but the problem with this is when you put it together like this, the horn will go on all the time. You look at the correct one, it's got these plastic insulators in it. And so what those do is they keep it from that, that uh, circuit being made. And of course, with the person who put this in, what they did was they forgot to put, or they took out this little plunger piece that goes right here that makes the horn work. Why? Because it was going all the time, so that was their solution. They never fixed anything. So we will put it back together the correct way and make sure that the horn works. The way that this little plunger goes in is there's a spring that goes in first, then there's a small black plastic retainer, and then the plunger sticks up out of it. So what it needs to do, it needs to be able to be pushed in with that spring. There's a little tab on the side, you see it right, right there, that will move down in order to lock everything in place. And then your test, to see if everything works, is to make the ground. So basically with the screwdriver I did what this is supposed to do. Now to fix this what I have to do is I have to rob basic, well I'm, let's see I have three of them. I'm going to take one of the plastic pieces from this to put into this one. This one's a pretty nice piece. Um, if you ever go about rebuilding one of these make sure that the metal is in good shape because if this doesn't do have continuity the horn's not going to work. So we'll throw that in the garbage. Or keep it for parts and we'll put this one in and here is the finished product so we have a working tilt working telescope working turn signal switch working hazard button and the best part a working horn button and it's all oyster colored which is the best color because the black just wasn't working here's the final result of the uh, air cleaner debacle in other words I got it to fit after hammering the sides of it and the fuel lines are much better looking but under the hood is basically all done we just have this interior part to go and as you saw it is one step closer with this new steering wheel so that's all for this video I know it was short but uh, I got lots of stuff coming up I got lots of work coming in also bought a whole bunch of parts cars this week so you guys will be seeing those soon on the channel